don't know about you, but I'm tired of all these tech tubers showing off their crazy expensive home labs and equally expensive gaming PCs. What if I told you that you could have a gaming PC and a full-fledged home server slash NAS complete with ECC RAM and IPMI all in one machine? Well, I hope that's exciting to you because that's exactly what I did. So let's take a look. Ah, oh yeah, here she is. Probably be better without the glass panel. Yeah, I'll sleep it off. Now you've probably heard of running a home server on your regular desktop PC, but I guarantee you this build is a little different than what you're expecting. Let's talk about it. So unless you've been completely focused on my beautiful face or you're completely blind, here are the two main components of the build. First being an AMD Ryzen 5 3600. Nothing crazy, but I wanted to go with something that maybe a lot of people are looking to upgrade from, has decent performance, and comes in at, at this point, just over $150. So sweet bargain if you're looking to do this entire build just from scratch. So with this six core 12 thread processor, we are pairing it with this ASRock Rack server workstation motherboard. And this is the X470 D4U model. And this is the heart of the build. This is what separates it from a normal desktop system and gives us that real hybrid gaming PC slash server setup. But before I get to the rest of the specs on this motherboard, Let's talk about the rest of the build. So for RAM, we have 32 gigabytes of DDR4 ECC unbuffered memory. We have a one terabyte SSD as our boot disk and two six terabyte Seagate Exos drives as our main storage. For the gaming aspect of it, the GPU we went with is a Radeon RX 6700 XT, which is a fairly decent GPU. I got it a while ago during the crypto boom and GPU shortage. so. I paid a lot more for it than what you can find it for today. As for aesthetics, the case we have built this in is the Inwin A3. They did send this over along with the CPU cooler that we're using, which is the Inwin BR24. This is a 240 millimeter AIO. They really cool feature in that it has a fan built directly into the mounting bracket, meaning that you're getting crucial airflow over your VRMs and your RAM, which you don't normally get with a regular AIO. So, I appreciate InWin sending these over. They have both been fantastic and a link for all the parts I am using are down in the description below. So now that we've talked about the parts, let's talk about why I'm doing this and what I wanted to accomplish. So it was mainly two things. One being that I wanted to use and build a modern system. So I know you can go out and get an older Xeon and throw it in there, but I didn't want to do that. That's extremely played out. And you're missing out on newer features like NVMe, PCI Gen 4, resizable bar, and so on. Now, yes, you could go with a newer Epic or newer Xeon, but that's just way too expensive. I also wanted to make sure that uh, this was an actual affordable build that someone at home could do or upgrade from their current system. The second thing is that I wanted to make sure that this build had real server features such as IPMI, ECC memory, onboard graphics, and IOMMU support for GPU pass-through. And like I said, we got it all with this board, the ASRock Rack X470 D4U. And like it sounds, it is an X470 chipset, so it is compatible with the Ryzen 2000, 3000, and while it doesn't say officially that it supports 5000 series, I've seen a lot of forum posts that users have gotten their 5000 series processors working with this board, so yeah. So you get the X470 chipset, but it is their server workstation line of boards, the ASRock Rack line. You do get all the creature comforts. Like I mentioned before, you get IPMI, which lets you control the system, over the network, which is awesome. You get ECC memory support because all Ryzen chips have ECC memory support, but the problem is that most X470 motherboards don't. This one does. Just make sure that you're using unbuffered ECC memory and not registered memory, which shouldn't matter. Uh, I don't think you're trying to put two terabytes worth of RAM in here, so that shouldn't be a problem. And probably the most underrated feature is the onboard graphics because as you know, all the Ryzen chips, aside from their APUs, don't have built-in graphics. 
this motherboard does. So that's why we can throw in a 3600 and get video output and not have to worry about anything funky with GPU pass through while only having one video device. None of that matters. We have built in graphics. So as it stands, this sounds like a terrific hybrid system and it is, but it's not perfect. So as a home server, you are limited with the Ryzen series on PCI lanes. So you're going to be limited to 20 lanes, which means you're not really throwing a bunch of add-in cards in here and a bunch of NVMe storage, but that is the trade-off you make. Obviously, if you went with an older Xeon or something, you do get all those PCI lanes, but trade-offs have to be made. And on the gaming side, you do miss out on some creature comforts that a modern desktop system has, such as no USB 2.0 headers on the motherboard, no USB Gen 3 USB-C headers either, no front panel audio connectors, and probably the worst, most unforgivable thing, no RGB headers. But we have a way around that, don't worry. So now that we've talked about all the hardware that is actually in here, how about we actually fire it up and show you what I'm running on here and how it actually performs? Okay, let's go over here. Okay, <clears throat> here's the point of the video where I show you what you can do with the system itself software-wise. Now, you can do pretty much whatever you want, honestly. You can install Windows on it. You can install Ubuntu Server, you can install Unraid, you can install TrueNAS, whatever you want. I'm a Proxmox boy. So I have gone with Proxmox as my main operating system hypervisor. So let's take a look at what I have running here. Again, this is entirely up to you. It will depend entirely on your use cases. But in my instance for this machine, I've spun up a single LXC container and within there I am running my Docker instance. And with 99% of my Docker instances, I do run Portainer, which I feel is an excellent Docker orchestrator and UI for interacting with your Docker instance. So in here you can see I have a couple of containers running. I have a WordPress site, I have a Node.js web server, and I have a file browser instance to host, you know, whatever files I want to share or just back up. And I'm not going to do a deep dive on any of these services. This is way outside the scope of this video. I'm just showing you an example of what you can have with this little hybrid system. So moving on from there, we have a Pop! OS VM that we can just spin up to test whatever, you know, Linux distros you want. And we can go in here and bada bing, bada boom, you have a Pop! OS instance running. You're free to make fun of all the lowly people using Windows because now you're clearly a superior human. So cool, we have that VM to play around with, but what about the NAS part? Well, spin up a TrueNAS instance. I personally, for my main system, am running TrueNAS core that is virtualized within Proxmox. And this would be almost the same thing, except I am running TrueNAS scale. It is the Linux-based version versus the FreeBSD-based core. You're free to choose whatever you want. I went with TrueNAS scale, and here you can see it is up and running, virtualized. You can pass through whatever drives you have in your system to TrueNAS and then spin up a nice little ZFS pool and share that with whatever services you want on your network through iSCSI or SMB or NFS, whatever floats your boat. And TrueNAS scale, I would say that is more catered to be a bare metal operating system than TrueNAS core. TrueNAS core is free BSD based, so you don't get as much support with virtualization and running services, you have to run jails over on scale where you it's you it's you it's where it's Linux based and you have access to the built in Kubernetes cluster. So yeah, I, again, what whatever you want, I, I don't care. So moving on to what actually makes this a hybrid system, because remember, not only did I want this to be a home server, I wanted this to be my gaming machine. Well, if you're gaming, you're probably gonna be doing it on Windows. So we do have a Windows VM set up here and you can go through the many documentation sites and tutorials that they have for passing through a dedicated graphics card. Uh, so that's what I've done. It's extremely easy, but for the most part, you're gonna follow the guides on passing through a GPU. And then if you want keyboard and mouse support, uh, make sure you do a USB pass through of that device. So you can see in here, I am passing through an entire port 
It does say unplugged because I have a little USB switch device so I can switch between PCs. Uh, but that is passed through so that I can use this keyboard and mouse with that VM as if it's its own bare metal Windows installation. And it works really well, honestly. I know there are issues with some games with anti-cheat and virtualization, but I haven't really run into that. And looking at my Time Spy scores, they are honestly really good. I mean, I am passing through eight threads to this, so it's no slouch. But again, it's not, it's no 16 core, you know, Ryzen 9 5950X, but I mean, for the price that went into this rig and the versatility you're getting out of it, this is honestly a really cool solution. Now, one thing you're probably thinking of is that if I'm running this as a desktop system and it is virtualized, how do I turn it on? Do I have to log into another computer to essentially turn my PC on? Because obviously there's no button here. Well, I am actually running an app called Proxy. And it is an app that lets you access all your Proxmox instances on your LAN. I think it might have been a dollar. I, I bought it like last year. And going into there, you can see we have our instance. We can see all the stats for it. But what we want to check out are the machines. So if we go in there, you'll see our Windows 10 VM is stopped. You can simply go in there, start it up. And just like that, our Windows 10 virtual machine is started up and I now have access to use it as if it were a regular desktop system sitting in front of me. So yeah, honestly, really cool. I mean, with everything running at this point, if we go to our system summary on our machine, you can see we're only sitting at about 20% CPU usage. And just remember that this is with Windows booting up. So it is using a bit more CPU usage as Windows starts all its random processes that it likes to start, but for the most part, without the Windows VM, it's sitting at like three to 5% usage at idle and only consuming about 80 watts, which obviously there's better options out there, but for a full-fledged desktop system, that's not bad at all. Okay, so overall, would I recommend doing this? I think this is the rare circumstance where I make one of these videos and I say, yes, I think this is a cool situation to take an older Ryzen processor that maybe you're upgrading from and turn it into a full-fledged desktop slash home server device that maybe it's a secondary device, maybe it is your primary device, and maybe you don't want to use a 3600. Maybe you want to throw a 5950X in there, and certainly it supports it. So it's entirely up to you, but I think the concept of this is actually really useful. Let me know down in the comments if you're running something like this where you know, your main desktop system is also a server that hosts, you know, websites or Plex or whatever services you have running in your home lab. I'm curious to know what you guys are running out there. But if you like this video, then please consider dropping a like. If you like content like this, then please consider subscribing. It would mean a ton to me. And I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreons and YouTube members. You guys are my dual hybrid desktop home server cute little just desktop high performance high efficiency you guys are awesome but that is all i have for you today if you're still sticking around watching at the end i sincerely appreciate it thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one